it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're in Vegas Pro 17, and I want to talk about some audio stuff, some simple audio stuff about stereo and surround sound, the basics of your project settings, and the tools Vegas gives you to use these things effectively. So first off, uh, I'm dragged this to the timeline. This is a wave, and you can see it's got two waveforms in it. Now some of your tracks may have two waveforms, some of them may have one. What this is, this means stereo. Stereo simply just means two speakers. So if it's a stereo track, it means it has two speaker outputs. Now this track pan over here, this talks about which speaker it's going to. So if you slide the pan all the way to the left, both the right speaker and the left speaker track are now playing out of the left. If you slide it to the right, both the right speaker and the left speaker are now playing out of the right. And when there's a percentage, that means it's partially playing out of one louder than the other. So it's just how much you've moved, how much of the track you move from one to the other. And this actually gives you a positioning difference. So when you have something panned only like 20% to the right, it actually perceives as if the sound is coming from right here. It doesn't just sound louder out of one speaker. There's actually a phenomenon that happens in your brain where you perceive a locational difference. Now, this is very important for surround sound, but also it is important for mixing. Uh, and also, separating channels makes it easier to see, to hear with your ears, uh, which track is, uh, it, tracks are clearer that way. There's less fighting for space in the cones of the speaker. So uh, this is a reason why people separate it, is to give you that spatial difference and also to give you uh, more clarity. So when you have a stereo track like this, you can actually uh, remix the audio if you want to by, uh, if you hit right click, and let's go ahead and copy it. I'm going to right click and hit insert a new audio track and then I'm going to paste a new audio track of the song below and now we have these two matching up and I'm going to right click the top one and go to channels and then I'm going to hit left only. Notice it was on both. We'll talk about that more in a second. And then I'm going to go to the right to the bottom one and I'm going to make that the right only. Now, what that does is now I can actually hear both of these in both speakers the same, and I've, I've actually messed up the mix. Because of this is centered still, I'm playing the right speaker in both speakers, and I'm playing the left speaker in both speakers, but I have successfully separated the track. Now the two channels that were on one track are now separated and on different tracks, and this can actually be remixed uh, the volume. Uh, if I would like to do that, but that is some of the principles of stereo mixing and how it exists. Now when you render out in stereo, remember uh, if you render just audio only and you have a stereo template, you will be rendering out in stereo. Uh, but you got to pay attention to, you could be rendering out in mono if you're not careful, just depending on the set. Some of these render formats will tell you whether or not they're going to mix mono or stereo in the final product. So that is stereo mixing, uh, but there's one more thing I would like to tell you about. If uh, we add another track down here, I can bring this down here too. And let's solo this track. Now, let's say I want to do a panning effect. Instead of creating multiple tracks and fading out of one and into the other, that's actually really complicated. If I just want to pan back and forth between speakers for whatever effect I'm doing, uh, have this track highlighted, go to Insert, Audio Envelopes, and then go to Pan. And here you can actually double click on it and create keyframes, and over time you can change whether it's panning to the right or the left speaker. And this will give you a whoop, 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 whoop effect, putting it in one ear to the other ear to the other ear to the other ear to the other ear. So notice too, if you double click on this, it'll return back to center. And if you right click it, you can actually kind of fade in between the two points. So 
that is the basics of panning the left and right speakers in stereo mixes. Now, here is the rub. If you want to do this in surround sound, there are some tricks you need to know. So first off, if you go to your video properties by clicking this little gear here and go to audio, you can actually change it to 5.1 surround sound. And make sure your resample quality is best. I need to change that to all best in all of mine, actually, uh, because there's audio is simple enough. There's no reason to degrade it. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it as best as possible. So now here, there's some, been some changes. You can see in the audio tracks, this is actually uh, moved all the way to the left. This is moved all the way to the right, and this one's moved all the way to the center. That is to match the project settings the best I had them when I changed it to stereo. So let's talk about this. If I'm mixing for surround sound, the same principles apply of having uh, a spatial difference of where the sound sounds like it's coming from when it's coming from in between the two speakers, except now we have five speakers. So now we can actually place the sound in space. So if the viewer is here and they're looking forward, let's look at that bigger. If you double click on this, you can see it bigger. If you the viewer is right here and you're looking forward you can actually change where it sounds like the sound is coming if you want it to sound like it's coming from behind the viewer to the left and behind of the viewer to the right and behind of the viewer to the front all that can be done with this sound planner it helps you understand where the spatial awareness for the sound is coming from you can also increase the volume of the center speaker too but it will change that spatial awareness ratio when you do that. If you double click the slider it goes back to where you double click in the box also goes back to where it goes. If you do it either down here or up here if you click on the speaker you can actually mute the speaker so you can select you can do single speaker mixing if you would like to do that. So you notice down here where I previously had audio envelopes now that I'm in surround sound those audio envelopes have been changed to keyframes uh, for the effect. Now this is different than what I'm currently working on because here I, you can notice that when I make changes to this panel it doesn't create keyframes so that is an artifact of the old project so don't be confused by that in fact you'd probably want to just go ahead and delete that effect notice too that this is the same with your mono tracks versus your stereo tracks where you're deciding this comes from, it still changes where it comes from all the speakers. And that includes the stereo track here. It will move where the stereo track is displaying from all the speakers, not just it, it must be combining these two channels because you're changing where it's going to be played from with all the speakers, not just the left and the right speakers. <laughs> On the surround master, you actually have more options than you're used to. Usually your master bus has your left and your right speaker, but now you also have, these are your front left and right, your rear left and right, your center speaker, and those that's five, right? But you also have your point one. Point one is just a way to say subwoofer. So 2.1 is two speakers and a subwoofer. 5.1 is five speakers and a subwoofer. If you want to send something directly to the subwoofer and not something else, that would be the LFE track. If you want to create an LFE track, which you can actually do, right click insert audio track, and then what you can do is you can actually click on the surround planner and change it to the LFE only channel. Now on the LFE only channel, here's where you control your bass. So now I, I moved this audio down here. Now all we're going to hear is the bass channel. Well, if I have it soloed, all you're going to hear is the bass channel. A real subtle bass. I have it turned down as well, so you're probably not going to hear everything. But now we can mix surround sound with bass and all five speakers in Vegas. Let's say we're going to render out this horribly done surround sound project. When you select what you want to render, you can go to File and Render As. And remember that this will likely change it back to stereo if it's not a codec that supports surround sound. So one thing you can do is you can actually go to your Dolby Digital A3 Studio and render out this 
for surround sound. This is an audio only track, but what you can do is in your DVD creator your, or your Blu-ray authoring software, most likely um, um, DVD architect, what you can do is add this audio in underneath your rendered video. That's a standard way of creating a DVD because YouTube and things like that don't just naturally take surround sound. So wherever you're delivering your surround sound project to, you may need to pay special attention to make sure that that audio isn't crushed back into stereo, that it stays surround sound. This Dolby Digital AC-3 Studio is a great place to start. So that is some basics for stereo and surround sound mixing in Vegas Pro 17. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.